Hi, my name is John. My name is Angelo, and today we're going to be talking about parthenogenesis, specifically in sharks. So, what is parthenogenesis? Parthenogenesis is the development of a zygote foregoing a fertilization. And the word parthenogenesis derives from the Greek word partheno, which means virgin, and genesis, which means birth. All right, now so who performs parthenogenesis in the animal or I guess insect kingdom? We have honeybees, and their parthenogenesis is actually called arenotokus. Areno, um, coming from meaning the root word for male in Greek, and tokus meaning to bring forth. And so in honeybees, their unfertilized eggs will actually be born as males, and the fertilized ones will, are the ones that will become females. In gall wasps, they have what's called deuterotokus, which means they can bring forth both males and females through parthenogenesis. And in these serapakis ants, they have the version where females will be the ones produced through parthenogenesis. Now, what about sharks? This is where it gets really interesting. In sharks, the kind of parthenogenesis that has been observed primarily in captivity is what's called automictic parthenogenesis. This is when a haploid cell collides with another haploid cell, or it can also um, duplicate its own chromosomes so that it can have the proper amount of chromosomes to, have to, to be born. And the interesting thing about this is that up until 2001, this was unheard of in sharks. It was uh, at a, in Nebraska, there was an aquarium full of bonnet head sharks, all females, that um, out of nowhere, a pup was born. And these are a species of sharks which do give live birth. And at the pup, everyone was puzzled when this happened, so they decided to call in experts, and they ruled out hybridization with any other kind of sharks in the, uh, the aquarium, which was, which was undocumented at the time. And then after some genetic analysis, it turns out that though that pup was genetically identical and homozygous to its mother, meaning that this was the first case of parthenogenesis in sharks discovered. Now, here is where things get really interesting. From the 2001 scenario, there have been other incidents in which parthenogenesis has been observed in sharks. but. I'm introducing Leone the leopard shark. From the years 2008 to 2012, Leone had several litters of healthy zebra sharks. And her, um, she had a mate in her tank. However, the aquarium decided, all right, we're gonna stop uh, our mating program, so let's just put her off on her own, right? So they separated her from her mate. She was laying eggs still, which is similar to chickens, normal in some species of sharks. Given the correct conditions, they will lay infertile eggs. But one of these infertile eggs was not so infertile. It actually had an embryo inside of it, and this was the first case ever for a, for a species to go from parthenogenesis to sexual, re I mean, from sexual reproduction to parthenogenesis. And so it, the interesting part is just how that transition happened, and it raised a lot of questions. Now, as does everything in life, parthenogenesis has its pros and cons. One pro is that they're able to reproduce without the need of a male counterpart. And it's the absolute easiest way to reproduce because it's just the one shark that has to let out a child. But of course, there are cons with that. And offspring, their offspring will have no genetic variation whatsoever. They'll all be coming from the same mother, which could, pre which could predispose them to having many diseases and could maybe wipe out their entire population. So why is further research on this topic important? We don't really know why this happens. Some scientists believe that it's pollutants in the water that's causing this to happen, or the water temperature, or other environmental stressors such as not having a, a male to mate with, which is causing it to happen. But we truly don't have a definitive answer. And this could be really bad if wild sharks undergo parthenogenesis because one, as I said earlier, one disease could wipe out their entire colony. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for listening to our presentation. Now, are there any questions that anyone would like to ask?
So, I got a question. Oh, yes. Could females only have female children, or could they have male and female children while giving birth in this way? Good question, student John. So, a uh, child's chromosomes are fully determined by the parent. And since the parent is only, only has an XX chromosome, it doesn't have an XY chromosome, it will only give birth to female children. I think I forgot, but you mentioned like, oh, I bet you mentioned what happened, why this happened. So could you just tell me again, uh, what are some, what is the reason this tends to happen or what we know about it? Excellent question, delinquent. Now, some scientists believe that this happens due to being unable to find a mate, in which case the female shark says, fine, I'll impregnate myself, and then so forth has a baby through parthenogenesis. Any other questions? No? Nope. Okay. Well, the real reason I decided to do a presentation on parthenogenesis is because... So this because... Guy. I'm going through it right now. Ah. Alright guys, with that being said, take it easy. We'll see you in the next one.